Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to enable the Pi menu options in Blender 2.82. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up Blender software. And like usual, we'll click on general here. And we've got our cube and our basic scene set up. Let's go to edit and preferences. And inside preferences, we're going to click on add-ons and type in Pi, P-I-E. And we'll enable this function called interface 3d viewport pie menus and when we expand it you'll get all of these different options to pop open pie menus to enable you to get to certain functions a lot quicker right so you need to go and try and learn these uh, shortcut keys there's quite a few of them in here uh, but some of them i use quite often some of them i don't use so often but it's worth having them available because it just saves you some time that's what it's going to do is just save you time but you have to go and learn them and spend some time learning them press them see what they do and see what functions come out of it right so if i disable this for example let's just disable it and close this if i press ctrl and s it will bring me up the save prompt where i can save my work but if i go back into the preferences for example and enable this 3d option the 3d viewport pie menus if i close this now and press ctrl s I get all of these different options pop up. It doesn't just go to file, save as. I've got save, save as, open file, link new, so I can create a new project quite quickly. Don't save it, here's my new project. So we can use that to um, uh, push open prompts quite quickly, right? Just like control A is to add a, as an object, you've, now you've got these other functions as well that you can use. Um, one that I use quite often is the cursor to selected. So you've got your 3D cursor here, right? So if you're moving that 3D cursor around, you can always press Ctrl and C to move it back to the original point, right? The original center of the uh, of this space, right? Ctrl and C is a shortcut key. But if you were to, if let's say if we move this uh, cube, let's take the cube and let's move it to a certain position. Let's click on it. Let's just move this cube up to this place. Now, what if you wanted that 3D cursor to be where the cube is? Because you want to add another object in this particular position. You can just click on the cube, press shift and um, S. So shift and S is a pie shortcut and then you can do cursor to selected. That's the cube selected. Click this and it will move the 3D cursor to this position. And you can press shift and A and maybe you want to create, I don't know, a UV sphere and scale that up. Now you've got a UV sphere sitting inside of this cube at that particular point. And it'll be, it would have been a bit cumbersome for you to create that sphere down here and then move it to this position and then start editing it and you can do like a boolean operation and you know delete the, the content from inside and do all that good stuff so it's just um a nice tool to have available uh it's one of the default ones inside blender that you can just access you don't have to install any plugins it's already there so you just enable it but my advice is go down here screen capture this so enable it then screen capture these uh these shortcuts maybe print it out or just cut and paste it somewhere or just have it for reference and then you can keep referencing to these and learn them um, uh, how they're working and what they're doing each different one right but loads of different shortcuts here and they all bring up a different type of prompt uh, depending on what shortcut you use all right so we go and experiment with them it's got these play forward and backwards and loads of different things so i find it quite useful i've been using them recently myself and I thought I'd share that bit of knowledge with you so that you can now go and use them as well. So let's go ahead and close down Blender. That was just a simple tutorial showing you how to enable the Pi menus within Blender's interface. I hope you find that tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.